So here we have another easily recognizable type of Hollywood car. We have a DMC DeLorean, um, DeLorean motor car. Um, this this car was the one, uh, not the exact car, but uh, the DMC DeLorean was actually used in the movies uh, Back to the Future. And uh, what was neat about these is they were not painted. They were totally made from stainless steel. So because they were made from stainless steel, all you needed to do was, you know, use some steel wool to clean up your car and you were good to go. Um, so, yeah, so we'll take a look at this uh, DeLorean here. This one, this particular one is a 1982. Take a look at the interior. Now this is what it, what it would have looked like uh, without all the uh, Hollywood modifications into making it the... Uh, back to the future car so this one's all stock and uh you can see how much different it is than the actual um hollywood version i believe these used a peugeot motor if i'm not mistaken and uh delorean was out for a very short time period but uh another cool um car We'll take a little walk around here. Sort of waiting for uh, Doc and Marty to take me back to the 1980s is where I want to go. <laughs> Stay there. But uh, yeah, this is a cool piece. The 1982 DMC DeLorean. The one car that you could actually buy that went into production that could go from land to sea was this Amphicar available in the early 60s. This is a 1964. So you could literally drive this into a lake and uh, it, once you got into a lake you could just putter, you know, I believe you had to flip a lever or something and it would go from um, powering the wheels to powering the propellers, which we'll show you. But this was actually real, a real car. This was really available. You could really buy this. Like I said, you could actually drive it to the lake and drive it into the lake, and it would float. And I've seen this car, on, and how I know so much about it is because I've seen this on Motor Train back in the 80s. They were talking about this particular car somebody had one and they actually took it out to the lake um drove it around in the lake and, uh, so you'll see um that here's your exhaust from when it was in the water and i believe that was the intake for the uh for the engine and if you look underneath there's your propellers and like I said this is real you could have really bought this in 1964 I forget how many years they produced the Amphicar but uh, so you could actually you didn't have to buy a boat and a trailer that was the idea you just drive your car to the lake put it in the lake and go fishing <laughs> um, Here's the interior. And here's some information on Amphicar 770. And you can look it up online. Um, but it was here available here in America. Uh, years of production was 1961 to 68. Um, like I said, you could actually um dry this into water right from the from the land without doing anything but throwing a lever which switched it from driving the wheels to driving the propellers and i'm trying to read this there are many great stories about amphicars one owner held the record for a car crossing the english channel for 40 plus years lyndon b johnson owned an amphicar i did not know that 
would elude the U.S. Secret Service and drive his screaming guests headlong into a pond, laughing maniacally as he did so. <laughs> wow, I did not know that part of it, but that's, that is hilarious now that I read that. And, um, uh, trying to read some other important stuff here. It's, and it's, topped 400 units annually for uh, selling. So, yeah, like I said, it's, it was a cool piece. Four-speed manual on land, forward in reverse and water. He used a 43 horsepower water cooled engine. Uh, country of origin was Germany. But it's kind of cool <laughs> to find out that a past president, Lyndon B. Johnson, actually owned one. I did not know that. So there you go, there's your history lesson. Uh, president Lyndon B. Johnson actually owned an Amphicar and uh, elude the secret police by driving it into uh, a pond. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. All right, so there you go. There's your Amphicar. So we are at Lane Museum in Asheville, Tennessee, and we are standing in front of a BMW Isetta. And the reason why I'm showing this particular car is because I remember a show on TV called Family Matters, I believe air in the 1990s. And on that show was a character by the name of Steve Urkel. And um, I don't know how many episodes it was into the show, but he ended up buying uh, on a show a BMW i Seta. And this is pretty much the, that particular car that the, you would have seen on the show. And uh, BMW I said uh, is actually available here in America. Uh, this one is a 1958 BMW I said 300. Uh, they didn't take off too well. So we'll, we'll see what it says here. Driven by the need for post war affordable transportation, BMW decided to supplement slow sales of larger cars with an expensive car. In an expensive car. 1955, BMW acquired the license from ISO, or Italian refrigerator company, to make this bubble car. As many as 3,925 Isetters were sold within the United States during 1958. But U.S. sales slowed due to a California ruling that Isetters could not enter their state's highway systems. Even though it has 10 inch tires, weighs less, weighs less than 800 pounds, and goes from 0 to 30 in 11 seconds. Well, 0 to 30 in 11 seconds, that's not very fast. But I guess that was good enough for 1958. <laughs> um, but mechanically, it was a very reliable car. From what I heard from somebody I knew that actually owned one, uh, he passed away. But he said it was pretty much a dependable car. You will notice that this car has one door. It has two passenger seats. Many Isetas survive today. This Isetta you see here has a few engine modifications, taking it from 12 horsepower to 20 horsepower. So this car only had 12 horsepower. And this increased the maximum speed from 53 miles an hour to 65. So there you go. So this is the car from the, sh like the car from the show uh, Family Matters. It's not the exact car, but Anyway, so here's here's how you enter the car. You actually got inside the car from the front. Um, here's the door handle, so you would grab the door handle, pull the door open, the steering wheel would swing out of the way. You would literally sit inside and then close the door and everything would fold into your lap. Um, so there's the BMW i set up. Here we have a uh, Chevrolet Corvair 95. Now Chevy came out with a Corvair car and they also made a van and a pickup truck that they call a ramp side pickup truck which had a door on the right hand side which you could open and load up easy. 
um, just like a regular Corvair, the engine was in the back. Um, this is a Corfibian uh, prototype. So this was um, a prototype made by Corvair, and is actually was actually meant for an idea to go from land to sea. Um, but uh, it, it, that's all it stayed. It was just stayed in its prototype stages. So just wanted to show this off a little bit. And it says um, all Corvairs were air cooled flatheads or flat six cylinder engines. They either had a manual transmission, um, two speed power glide. This one was. Uh, this is the one Corvair that largely went unnoticed was the Corf. Corfibian, I'm guessing I'm saying it right, prototype. And you see the engine right here in this area.